Uh, so what I'm going to do with this <clears throat> while I'm talking, you guys can pass this around and mess with it, but just put it on your hand. It's turned on. Uh, you'll see a little uh, number on the dial. It tells you what number you're on. Turn it on and roll that thing up, and then that's the black button. Don't hit the red button. The red button on this collar is a big jump. It's like a 25 level jump or something like that. So it jumps up automatically 25 levels. So if you hit the red button, you may be surprised. You can't, you're, you're certainly welcome to hit it if you want. Uh, but so for on this collar, I start and at 10 or 11, I can feel it very lightly. And then as you go up, you'll feel it, but just mess around with that if you like. And then you guys can do that as I talk here and you can sort of see how one, what one feels like. Um, and again, I always recommend, you know, if you're going to use a dog training tool, you'll be familiar with it. And I like, uh, I, for, uh, assuming you can, you can bring yourself to do it. If you're going to use a collar, put it on uh, and turn it up at the levels you're going to use it and feel what it feels like, right? It gives you uh, a, a respect for what you're doing. I have, there's a very, very well-known uh, electronic collar trainer and uh, a Belgian guy named Bart Ballone who gives seminars around the, around the world in electronic collar use. He was a very good dog trainer. He was a Belgian ring trainer in Belgium for years and he gives seminars a lot now. Uh, and he used to give a lot of seminars to police and military uh, things, and he had guys that he called uh, um, uh, electronic cowboys, right? They were very, 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 very quick to push the button on their dogs, regardless of whether or not their dogs really had an understanding of what. And sometimes uh, uh, to make people more thoughtful. So he set up a system for one of his seminars that had two collars on the same, and he would strap one to the handler's leg inside their leg and the other one on the dog. So every time you stim the dog, you had to stim yourself. <laughs> And so it slowed it down. The electronic cowboys got a little more careful about how often they pushed the button. They thought about it. Do I really need to push it here or not? And it was a good training tool. So uh, I think it, you should have a healthy respect for it. There, we have, again, like in many things, we have misconceptions cutting both ways. So we have the people that, like, if you put an electronic collar on your dog ever, you're going to wreck your dog. Your dog's going to be completely destroyed and, and crushed. And then the other pe people that are much, much too cavalier about using them, right? And the buttons are easy to push and the dial's easy to turn. And so if you're frustrated or angry or any of the rest of those things, it's very easy to get into unproductive territory quickly if you're not reining yourself in. And uh, we're human beings, we all lose our temper, we all get frustrated at some point, and dog training is a bad place for that to happen. That's where we make poor decisions. And so, uh, like most things in life, decisions made that way are not necessarily the best. <laughs> and so I, I, I like to keep that in mind, and it, I think if you know in the back of your head the kinds of things you're putting your dog through.